The ART endobronchial blocker is intended for endobronchial blockade of the left or right lung for procedures which require one lung ventilation. One lung ventilation is commonly required for surgical procedures and is normally achieved using a double lumen endotracheal tube. One of the advantages of using this blocker set is that it can be used with a conventional endotracheal tube. The three millimeter diameter does not significantly compromise the cross-sectional area of the endotracheal tube such that there is no uh, noticeable change in resistance to airflow through that endotracheal tube. In terms of the quality of the surgical exposure using a bronchial blocker, in general our surgeons are similarly happy with the field exposure experienced with the use of a double lumen tube as they are with the endobronchial blocker. The placement of the blocker does require adequate lubrication and I think the lubricant of choice in this situation is an aerosolized silicon spray. The other gel type lubricants can interfere with the optics of the bronchoscope as the bronchoscope is passed through the endotracheal tube. A special bronchoscopy port, the ART multiport airway adapter, allows simultaneous bronchoscopy, ventilation and endobronchial blockade. Assembly of the device is straightforward. With a conventional endotracheal tube correctly placed above the carina, the ART multiport airway adapter is attached to the tube. It then connects to a standard anesthesia circuit and the patient is ventilated with 100% oxygen. The ART endobronchial blocker uses a monofilament guide loop assembly which fits through the lumen of the endobronchial blocker and exits from the blocker's distal end to form a small adjustable monofilament loop. A pediatric fiber optic bronchoscope is advanced through the guide loop to couple the bronchoscope and the endobronchial blocker together. This may be done within the multiport adapter, endotracheal tube, or within the trachea proper. The endobronchial blocker and bronchoscope may also be coupled together prior to attachment of the multiport adapter to the endotracheal tube. This coupling allows the endobronchial blocker to follow the bronchoscope. The guide loop can be adjusted to facilitate proper approximation. Once the carina is visualized, the bronchoscope is advanced into the section of the lung which is going to be deflated. After the area to be blocked is entered, the bronchoscope is held stable and the loop with the endobronchial blocker is advanced and pushed off the end of the bronchoscope. After slight retraction of the bronchoscope, the endobronchial blocker may be either advanced or retracted to place it in final position. Under bronchoscopic vision, the balloon is inflated with air using the pilot balloon assembly. The balloon should fill the entire endobronchial lumen to be blocked and not herniate into the main stem trachea. The lung should be carefully auscultated following initial bronchial blocker placement and balloon inflation to ensure proper functioning of the endobronchial blocker. If ventilation should be acutely difficult during endobronchial blockade, the balloon should be immediately deflated. The bronchoscope can then be withdrawn. The blocker port of the multiport adapter is tightened, ensuring that there is no escape of gas and that the blocker does not move within the multiport adapter. After assuring that the blocker is in the correct lung, the balloon is deflated and the bronchoscope port closed. The patient is positioned for their surgery and once again the balloon is inflated to allow the surgery to proceed. It is important to deflate the balloon prior to final positioning of the patient because some movement of the endotrachea or carina can occur. Once the position is confirmed, the guide loop can be withdrawn from the central lumen of the blocker and the lung deflation can begin. The guide loop assembly cannot be replaced within the endobronchial blocker once it has been removed. Once the loop is removed from the blocker, the lung will deflate both passively and through absorption atelectasis. In addition, deflation can be assisted by direct aspiration with a syringe. The blocker's central lumen can also be used to deliver CPAP with the enclosed adapter. Well, there are several indications for the use of a single lumen tube with an endobronchial blocker set. And I use it in both the setting of thoracic surgery as well as the setting of cardiac surgery. In the thoracic surgery setting, it's particularly advantageous to use it in a situation where there's an anticipated difficult airway where it would be much easier to place a single lumen tube than a double lumen tube. We also use it in the patient coming to the operating room for thoracic surgery or a patient coming to the operating room for uh, with the need for one lung ventilation who has a tracheostomy in place. Again, the blocker can be placed down the trach quite easily. 
The other situation where we use it uh, quite frequently is in the setting of thoracic trauma, where the patient presents to the operating room emergently with an endotracheal tube in place, potentially from the field or from the emergency department, and we can quickly get lung isolation without having to worry about replacing that tube with a double lumen tube. However, those are the specific indications where we use it, but we use it routinely in any type of thoracic surgery, really as a replacement for the double lumen tube. Uh, in that situation, has a number of advantages over the double lumen tube. One of those is the relative ease of placement of it versus a double lumen tube, as well as the fact that the lumen of a single lumen endotracheal tube is much bigger than that of a double lumen tube, and I find that when patients are awakening from anesthesia, they can breathe much easier through a single lumen tube than through the smaller lumens of the double lumen tube because of the difference in the radius of those tubes and the relative resistance to airflow. So I find in the patient, particularly the patient that has some compromised lung function who is still uh, just awakening from anesthesia, has some residual sedatives on board, it's much easier to have them breathe through a single lumen tube. So I find that an advantage in most of the thoracic patients, and I use it uh, quite routinely in that setting. Contraindications for use of the ART endobronchial blocker include an airway diameter insufficient to allow passage of the endobronchial blocker and the unavailability of fiber optic equipment. Potential adverse effects which may result include hypoxia, hypoxemia, endobronchial irritation or injury, and tracheal injury. This device should only be used by those familiar with the use of pediatric scopes and airway anatomy. The use of pulse oximetry is recommended when using this device. Available in 5 French pediatric spherical, 9 French spherical, and 9 French elliptical sizes, the ART endobronchial blocker is a new tool to achieve direct visualized one lung ventilation using a standard endotracheal tube. The use of the endobronchial blocker has been very well received by both my anesthesia colleagues as well as our surgical colleagues, be it in the difficult airway case, the complicated thoracic aortic surgery patient or in the routine thoracic patient, it's significantly added to the scope of our practice. For more information regarding this or other Cook Critical Care products, please contact your local representative or call 1-800-457-4500.